I'm back from holiday, and if you wonder where I was, this here should give you a hint. Hello, welcome to the third episode of Wawat Moss tutorial. Quick reminder, we are trying to reproduce as much as possible the beautiful Atmos website. In the first part, we made the foundations. In the second one, we added nice lighting effects and starting adding the text. And today we will slow and animate the camera when we are close to text sections, animate the sky colors, set the final clouds, and finally add fading and noise effects. That's a lot to do for today, so let's get started. Let's set up the final text. To make it simple, we will take the text section we prepared and move it into a new component named text section. It takes a title, a subtitle, and the rest of the props are for the group. Paste the text group and add the props, set the title from the prop, and render it only if there is a title. And set the subtitle. Now in the experience, let's create a text sections array with use memo to not re-instantiate it at every render. It will contain the position, title and subtitle. For the position, we will use the curve points position as a starting point to make it simpler to place and also if we want to adjust them later. Currently, our curve points are directly on the curve, so let's move our points in a curve points variable. Now let's map our text sections on our scene. Text sections has a weird color and it's because I put it in the use frame, it should be outside. It's working, let's add all our text sections. The title Fear of Flying is on two lines and is over the subtitle. We can fix it by setting the anchor Y on the title to bottom. That way the zero position on the Y axis is always at the bottom of our title, whatever the number of lines. That way we can set the subtitle Y position to zero as the anchor Y is on the top. Now it looks good and you can set the text of your choice without problem. For a better effect, let's move our camera when we are getting close to the text sections. We'll wrap our camera in a group named Camera Rail that we will slide on the X axis. In Use Frame, let's iterate over each text section and calculate the distance with our current position. If the distance is less than the friction distance constant, we will start sliding our rail. I ended up with a friction distance of 42 because it's always the answer. To calculate the sliding factor, we use 1 minus distance divided by the friction distance and we multiply it by a new variable on our text section that we name camera rail dist. That way we can adjust it the way we want. I chose minus 1 and 1.5. And now we lerp toward that position. You can see the effect and our line is not on the center anymore, but when we are out, we should answer to set it back. To do so, we declare a boolean named reset camera rail with a true value. And if one of the text section is closed, we set it to false. So only if no text section is near, we reset our camera rail position to the center. Now it's going to its original position. On Atmos website, the scroll speed is getting slower when we are getting closer to the text section. First, let's adjust our scroll controls by setting only 20 pages and a damping value of 0.5. Now what we'll do is to lerp our scroll value slower when we are getting close to a text section. We need to store the last scroll position in a reference. In the use frame, the default friction factor will be 1, it means we are not slowing it. Now if our distance is below the friction distance, our friction will be equal the distance divided by the friction distance. I set a minimum value of 0.1 to not slow too much the movement. Instead of using the real scroll offset, we need to use the lerp to 1, so let's calculate it. We lerp our last scroll toward the real scroll offset using delta time multiplied by the friction, thanks to 3 math utils lerp function. As we only want value between 0 and 1, we can protect it with a min and max. Then set the last scroll to the newly calculated value. Now we need to replace our previous calculations using the scroll offset with the lerp scroll offset. Ta-da! We now have that swipe and slow effect when we are near text sections. 
Time to animate our background colors. We will use JSAP library, so run yarn add JSAP. Still in our experience, we declare a reference to store our timeline and instantiate it in use layout effect. We create a reference to store our background colors with color A and B properties. Then we say to our timeline to transition our colors to new values during one second. Let's add the background colors reference to the background component. We remove the color A and B. And as it's not a state and we don't want to do many high level re-renders, we will keep a reference on the two gradient layers to set the colors. Then in use frame, we set the gradient and gradient M its A and B colors. The animation plays automatically while we want to bind it to the scroll. In the experience, we can pause our timeline and in the use frame, seek the position of the timeline based on the lerp scroll offset. Way better, let's set our real colors. Starting to look nice, but the environment is not updating because by default for optimization purpose, it's based on the first frame. We can add frames equal infinity, so it's always up to date. Now look how our plane, the clouds and line colors change nicely when we fly. The clouds look bad, so I watched a tutorial on how to create ours in the same style of Atmos. All we need to do is in Blender to create a metaball, enter edit mode and add other metaballs. I tried many times to have a ok result. Then convert the metaball to a mesh and export it into GLTF. We can delete our old GLB model and run GLTF JSX to get the new mesh. Copy it and update our existing component. Don't forget to switch GLB to GLTF path. Now we have the new clouds. Like we did for the text, let's create an array of cloud properties. I also used the curve points to position the clouds and played with the rotation and scale so even if it's only one model, the clouds look slightly different. Now we can render our clouds and tada, we have a lot of clouds, but we want them to fade in and not being visible from that far. We could calculate the distance and pass it to the cloud props, but it would be not effective. So we will use our best friend, the shadows. I highly recommend you to watch my video about it if you have no idea what it is. We won't create a custom shader, but we will inject code into the mesh standard material fragment shader. To do so, we can use on before compile and let's lock the fragment shader. It's a lot of includes and what interests us is the opacity. So we will use replace on the diffuse color line and add our custom code. We define a fade distance, it could be a uniform too. We get the distance between our camera and the fragment with length of V view position. Then we use smooth step from fade disk to zero, based on the distance to get a value between zero when we are far and one when the item is closed and should be visible. Then on the original shader code, we multiply the opacity by our fade opacity factor. Magic, our clouds are fading, but I did some research to make it less linear. The book of shader linked to those functions and provide the call to exponential functions. So I added a second replace before the main to be able to insert that function. Then I use it on the fade opacity. Now only items very close are not transparent at all. As we want this effect to apply on the curve and the text sections, we can create utils function to do it. Let's use it on our cloud, curve, and on the text sections. Unfortunately, on the text, we would want a basic material to avoid the lighting to impact the text color, but it would be a different code to make the shader work. So call me Peppa Pig, but I just create an overwrite on the shader to cancel the lighting effects. This is not a big deal here, but not the most optimized way. Magnifico, our texts are now fading and purely white. Let's add some post-processing to make it look closer to Atmos. Run yarn, add at React 3 post-processing. 
Next do the scroll controls, add the effect composer and add the noise effect with the opacity of your choice. I think Atmos effects are homemade, but this one looks already nice and is close to what the creators did. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm very happy to what we built so far. I think that we are done with the 3D part, unless there are missing things that you absolutely want to see. Next week we will add the HTML CSS elements to make it look pro. Please hit the like button to help other developers discover this content, and don't forget to subscribe to be notified when the final episode is released. If you want to go further into 3.js and React 3 Fiber, jump to the next video by clicking or touching here.